Imagine a milestone moment where India's space ambitions soar beyond government control as the nation's first privately built rocket prepares for liftoff. But is this the dawn of a new era of innovation, or does it raise concerns about prioritizing profit over exploration? Let's dive into the exciting yet debated world of privatized space launches, where India's p rocket is set to make history. The small satellite launch vehicle, SSLV, technology has been handed over to Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, which, interestingly, is also part of the consortium working on the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV. For those new to this, think of the PSLV as India's reliable workhorse for sending satellites into space. It's like the dependable pickup truck of rockets, capable of carrying payloads up to about 1,750 kilograms into low Earth orbit. The SSLV, on the other hand, is a smaller, nimbler option for lighter loads, around 500 kilograms. According to insiders from the industry, the maiden flight of this privately manufactured PSLD could well happen in the early part of 2026, with production almost wrapped up. And it's not stopping at one. At least two additional launches are on the horizon for that year. We've begun shipping the PSLD components, and we're optimistic about two or three missions next year. Of course, this hinges on the satellites being prepared and slots opening up in ISRO's schedule, explained at Ramchandani, Senior Vice President and Head of LNT Precision Engineering and Systems, a key player in the consortium crafting these private PSLV vehicles. For its debut voyage, the PSLV N1 will transport the Earth Observation Satellite 10, EOS-10, a tool designed to monitor our planet's surface for things like weather patterns, crop health, and environmental changes. Beginners, picture EOS-10 as a high-tech camera in the sky, snapping detailed images to help us understand and protect Earth. Originally, this mission was eyed for the first quarter of 2025. Sources reveal that at least one launch with the private PSLV could have squeezed in this year, but delays kicked in because the accompanying satellite wasn't quite ready. Ranch and Danny noted the hurdles. We encountered some issues with certain parts or systems, but ISRO stepped in to assist. Now, we're fully prepared for launch. This collaboration highlights how public-private partnerships are crucial in space endeavors, blending expertise for smoother operations. But here's where it gets controversial. Is rushing these private launches due to commercial pressures risking safety? Or is it the bold step India needs to compete globally? Looking ahead, the demand for such services seems robust. In 2022, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISARO, India's premier space agency responsible for groundbreaking missions like Chandrayaan and Mangalayan, invited bids to commercialize the PSLE, marking it as the pioneer launch vehicle to go private after the space sector welcomed corporate entrance. The HAL and LNT team snagged a deal to produce five rockets for ISRO. Though Ramchandani hints at expansion, I think ISRO sees the market potential, and we might handle another 10 missions down the line. Currently, ISRO handles the payloads. Those are the satellites or other cargo for these PSLV flights. But as time progresses, the consortium could build its own roster of clients, pitch launch services independently and even manage schedules autonomously. This stands in contrast to the SSLV approach, where ISRO insisted up front that private firms handle everything from production to sales right from the start. It was up to the companies to gauge demand and meet it, Ramchandani pointed out. And to give you a clearer picture, imagine SSLV as a boutique service for quick, affordable lifts, while PSLV caters to heavier, more complex payloads. Think large communication satellites that keep your TV signals flowing or detailed Earth monitoring tools. Satellite manufacturers are already knocking on the door, particularly those in communications and Earth observation who need heftier satellites that exceed the capacity of smaller vehicles like the SSLV or Vikram-I, a private rocket from Skyroot Aerospace. 
Once we nail a couple of launches, trust will build. Right now, we're not aggressively seeking clients, but that's the logical next move after proving ourselves, Ramchandani added. For context, Vikram I is another Indian private rocket aimed at suborbital flights and small satellite deployments, showing how the sector is diversifying. And this is the part most people miss. Could privatizing space launches democratize access to orbit, making it cheaper for startups and nations alike? Or does it risk turning cosmic exploration into a profit-driven race that overlooks equitable global benefits? Anana Dutt is a principal correspondent at the Indian Express, specializing in health topics. Her reporting covers everything from the rising challenges of non-communicable diseases, like diabetes, and hypertension to battling widespread infectious illnesses. She provided in-depth coverage of the government's COVID-19 response and the vaccination rollout, with her articles prompting city authorities to invest in advanced testing for underserved communities and correct inaccuracies in official data. Dutt also has a passion for India's space program, penning stories on major projects such as Chandrayaan 2 and 3, Adifir L1, and Gaganyan. She was part of the first group of 11 media fellows with the RBM partnership to end malaria and participated in a short-term early childhood reporting program at Columbia University's DART Center. Holding a bachelor's from Symbiosis Institute of Media and Communication in Pune and a PG diploma from the Asian College of Journalism in Chennai, Dub began her career at the Hindustan Times. Outside work, she hones her French on Duolingo and enjoys dancing. Read more. Stay updated with the latest click here to follow us on Instagram. Copyright the Indian Express Private LTD. Tags. PSLD. What do you think? Is privatizing space launches a game changer for India's tech scene? Or does it spark worries about safety and accessibility? Share your views in the comments. Do you agree that commercial demand will drive innovation, or fear it might overshadow scientific curiosity? Let's discuss.